This is the Dell Inspiron 1300 from 2006, and today we're going to be installing Windows 10 on it. Why? I don't know. The 1300 was Dell's lowest end laptop that you could have bought at the time. It's so low end, it actually shares the design with several other models, the most common one actually being the B130. That's what Dell calls it on their website but they're the exact same computer. This laptop, when it was new, would have cost probably around 500 bucks and came with a Celeron M 1.5 gigahertz CPU, 512 megs of RAM, a 40 gig hard drive, and a DVD-ROM drive. I upgraded this computer to a 1.7 gigahertz Pentium M735 with three gigs of RAM, an 80 gig hard drive, and a DVD burner. Despite the specs being not too bad, the computer itself was definitely far from the highest end thing. The keyboard and trackpad definitely aren't ideal, as by its small size, and there's barely any I.O. on the laptop at all. It's also a very thick and heavy laptop from its day, but for the time, it wasn't too bad, I guess. It's just not really that exciting. But because this laptop is based on a Pentium M, allegedly, yes, I'm about to cite Wikipedia here, the Pentium M does have the required instruction sets to, in theory, run Windows 10. So, why not try it? What's the worst that could happen? This computer currently runs an old crapped up install of Windows XP Home Edition on it with a ton of stuff on it. That's what this computer would have come with, however, since it was manufactured in 2006, it does actually have Windows Vista drivers, and it was quote, Vista capable on the computer when I got it. So, theoretically, with the CPU supporting it and there being some form of drivers, it should in theory work. I'm not going to upgrade it to Windows 10, that would take way too long, I'm just going to do a clean install anyway. This computer on Windows XP isn't super slow, but even the replacement hard drive that I put into this computer isn't the greatest thing in the world, which I guess is really a me thing more than a this computer thing. So while you can do things like browse the internet, it's definitely not very fast, and it doesn't help that this thing has such an old web browser on it. It's worth mentioning that this computer does have a Dothan Pentium M, so that's why this will work. I'm going to be installing this from a USB to SD card thingy, because I don't actually have any flash drives, and the particular ISO of Windows 10 that I'm using is 32-bit and 64-bit, so it wouldn't even fit on the DVD anyway. And thankfully this computer is new enough that it does support USB booting. I figured I would mention this, but the display on this computer is the better option, the 15.4 inch 1280x800 display, but it's seen a lot of hours, so it's kind of yellowed. Now you might have noticed something a little bit interesting in the installer. The version of Windows that I'm installing was last modified September 29th, 2017. When I said earlier you can allegedly install Windows 10 on this, what I actually mean is you can install Windows 10 1709 on this. Anything newer than 1709 will break the computer, presumably maybe because of instruction sets or something, but I haven't really been able to find a whole lot of information about this. I'm sure somebody probably knows, and I'll probably look stupid later, but if I want to run Windows 10 on this, this is the version I have to install. The reason this is going to be a problem is because Windows is going to try and force the latest feature update onto me, so we'll need to figure that out later. But for now though, the most important thing is installing the operating system, and surprisingly, it didn't actually take too long, I'd say it took about 20 minutes, which for Windows 10 really isn't that bad, especially because this hard drive kind of sucks. It definitely helps that this is being installed over USB and not DVD. Out of the box, it appears to have picked up the audio and Wi-Fi, which is a good start. Although I'm not going to connect this to the internet right now since I don't want it to try and update it at all, it's just going to slow things down. And indeed, after some time, we were at the desktop, where again, it appears to have picked everything up, except for the graphics. With that in mind, I thought about connecting it to the internet and trying to see what I could do about Windows Update. Since there are other updates for this, and it is out of date, but I need to see if I can figure out a way of preventing the feature update 
while installing the other updates. I'll also need to figure out activation, but that's something for another time. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at this, as when I was trying to actually get the updates, it managed to do the feature update anyway. And what was even worse was that all of the other updates were being held up because it had to wait for the feature update to download. In this case, it was trying to install 22H2, which to my knowledge, doesn't work on this computer and would just brick it, which is not something I wanted to do. Unfortunately, trying to defer the update at this point isn't going to do anything since it's already started, and there was not a whole lot else that I could do. As a last ditch effort, I paused updates to prevent them from trying to do anything else, and then I went and installed Legacy Update which isn't necessary on a Windows 10 PC. However, what this allows you to do is update Windows using the old legacy Windows update website. As a matter of a fact, it does work on Windows 10 and 11, in case you just feel like updating Windows that way instead. The important thing about being able to use the website is it allows you to select what updates you want and be able to hide other updates, something you can't do on Windows Update for Windows 10. Unfortunately, this didn't appear to pick up anything other than a Microsoft Defender antivirus update, and that also failed to install, so I'm going to return to updates later. In the meantime, I decided to return to the elephant in the room, the lack of a graphics driver. I knew it would be a stretch, but I wanted to see if I could do something about, well, the lack of a graphics driver. As right now, we can't even use the screen in anything higher than 1024 by 768 because this thing was a budget option when it was new, it uses an Intel 915 chipset, which means it uses 915 graphics, which normally don't work very well on Windows Vista. But I knew that there was a Vista driver, so I was hoping maybe by some chance I would be able to get this to work. My first immediate go-to was Snappy Driver Installer, just because of convenience reasons. Since Windows Update, of course, didn't pick anything like this up. I decided to try this first. I don't even really care about the rest of the drivers, just the graphics driver since that's not installed, especially because restore points don't work. While it claimed they installed just fine, however, when the computer rebooted, well, device manager wasn't very happy. Interestingly, it just said it can't initialize the driver at all, not even that it's not for this version of Windows at all. My next thought was to go to Dell's website to try and download the driver that way because I had thought that this computer had full Vista support. After all, it claimed it was Vista capable. This is our first good look at web browsing on this machine, which isn't that great. As you might be able to tell, it's functional, I guess. I installed Firefox on this because this didn't have any form of other internet browser on it. But looking on Dell's website, all of a sudden, painted a rather clear picture. While there are 32-bit Vista drivers on Dell's website for pretty much every single device in this computer, the one thing that it doesn't have a driver for is the graphics. I guess this is something I should have probably checked beforehand. I looked through the driver list again just to make sure I wasn't crazy, but if it is there then it's really hidden because I didn't find it at all. Well, just because I couldn't really lose a whole lot by trying it, I tried the Windows XP driver instead. This was going to be a long shot, because XP drivers are entirely different from modern Windows drivers, but I figured I don't have a whole lot to lose. Once again, while it claimed it installed just fine, when the computer rebooted, still no luck. There was still no graphics driver. At this point I did some research, just seeing if any driver existed for this, and what I quickly came to the realization was there actually is no driver available for this. As it turns out, Intel themselves did not support the 915 chipset past XP. That driver that Snappy Driver installed from 2007 is the Windows Vista driver that Microsoft themselves includes in their own operating system. This is how it's technically Vista capable, because it has that driver which only works with Vista. I did some digging online and found that there are some HP drivers that will work on Windows 7, but they don't work on Windows 8 or anything newer. While I was doing my research, I found this humorous old Intel forum post of somebody who was not very happy about this at all. I tried a few other drivers on this, just because why not, but the writing was on the wall. This computer has no graphics drivers or anything, 
not supported at all. Which means that if I want to use this anymore, I'm going to have to use it with the standard graphics adapter. I think the bigger thing I'm annoyed about is that I can't even use it at native res. I don't even really care about it being sluggish, but at 1024 by 768 this doesn't really look that great. It was definitely a shame, but I mean, come on, you gotta kind of just expect this type of thing on a computer this old. This CPU and graphics chipset actually came out in 2004. They were just used on this computer from 2006, which basically means I'm really installing Windows 10 on a computer from 2004. It's just about the oldest thing you can even run Windows 10 on to begin with. So any drivers that were made for Vista were simply XPDM drivers rather than WDDM drivers, which is why this graphics chipset doesn't support Arrow or anything on Windows Vista or 7. So with that in mind, I ended up just giving up on trying to find any kind of graphics driver. I'm sure there's modded ones out there, but from the few websites I can even find about this, they're either just sketchy drivers or they just don't work at all. So I've kind of just got to give up with this. With that in mind, I returned to trying to update Windows on this computer. As it turns out, I had a big brain moment, and when you pause updates on Windows Update, it indeed translates to Legacy Update. When I unpaused updates, all of a sudden it found a few updates to install. But now it became a race against time to try and install the updates through Legacy Update before Windows Update itself could actually install the updates. It was still trying to install the 22H2 update, so using Legacy Update, I just hid it from being able to install it on here in the hopes that maybe by some chance it would stop trying to install itself on actual Windows Update, where I couldn't control this type of thing. Because Windows Update is slow, since it was trying to download that other update, Legacy Update of course finished before it. After all, there weren't really a ton of updates for it anyway, there were just 10, and most of them were just .NET framework and some cumulative updates. There aren't a lot of updates either way because Windows 10 1709 stopped getting updates in 2019. Which means that, amazingly, it actually would have made more sense to install Windows 8.1 on this computer because it got a whole four more years of updates. Or the more boring option as Linux, but you know, again, that's boring option. Indeed, after that initial round of updates, I checked and there were no more updates on Legacy Update, just that one Windows Defender one. Amazingly, I didn't actually think this would work, but it indeed stopped trying to install the 22H2 update in Windows Update, which means I guess I've defeated Windows Update. I tried running it a few times and while it kept getting confused over that security intelligence update, the important thing was it wasn't trying to upgrade this computer to the new feature version. Windows Update doesn't seem to know that the other updates are installed since it doesn't actually say that they are installed through the update history, but it's not trying to push them again, so it's pretty clear that they are installed. Well, with updates out of the way, it's time to answer the big question. How bad is this operating system on this computer? Well, with no graphics drivers of any kind, this is going to be a very sluggish computer to use. I mean, again, not even being able to put this at the native res is going to make it even worse. It also doesn't help that this operating system is taking a significant amount of this computer's resources. That being said, it can still lightly browse the internet, but again, because of this old slow hard drive, it's going to be a difficult task. Out of morbid curiosity, I tried to load a YouTube video on it just because, I don't know. It will do YouTube though, if you want a really cinematic version. This is maybe like, what, a frame every few seconds? Amazingly, it was this computer that I learned that YouTube keeps putting automatic chapters on my videos again. And it can still do basic offline things like Office. I had an old copy of Office 2016 that I figured I might as well try on this thing, and yeah, it's Office. You could do your Word documents on this thing if you really wanted to. And while it works, let's be real. This is far from the most ideal way to do this type of thing if you need a laptop like this. I mean, it's basically limited to not even being able to go onto the internet at all with how long it takes to load pretty much anything. As I mentioned earlier, if you actually needed to use a modern operating system like this, it might have made more sense to actually install Windows 8 over Windows 10 since it just doesn't work on this computer. Or, as I alluded to earlier, a Linux distro if you needed to get some light work done, because that's basically about all this computer can do. Anything even remotely graphically intensive isn't going to work because of that lack of a driver. 
so I'm not even going to think about trying to run Peggle on this thing. Part of me now is curious how Linux would do on this machine because of the lack of drivers. Apparently Intel made Linux drivers for this graphics chip back in the day, but I can't imagine they're actually going to mean anything on modern Linux. So while you can do it, you can install modern Windows on this thing, I think I'm going to call this a failure just because of the lack of a graphics driver, because it really does kind of kill a lot about this machine. Still, it was an interesting experiment, I guess. Maybe in a future video I will possibly explore installing Linux on this just to see what the difference is, because now curiosity due to the graphics situation. But for now, it was a fun idea, but... I think we're going to leave it at that. To be clear, there are other laptops from 2006 that will probably run Windows 10 just fine, it's just that I got a bit unlucky with the particular computer I chose and its hardware setup. In fact, I have a few that it might just work on. Maybe that'll also be a future video?